anytime. You can haul 22 books for under $20. It's a great day. Hi, I'm Kim the Paper Traveler, and today I'm going to share with you my library sale book haul. I will note, however, in my next reading update, I will show you some new books that I have purchased recently. I have like five or six new ones to show you. I'll show you those separately, though. But these are all my library sale books, and I have a mixed variety of books. When I go into these sales, the thing I look for the most are science fiction and fantasy books. My library doesn't carry a whole great deal of those kind of books, so I'm always happy when I find them. So I have anywhere from historical fiction, women's fiction, nonfiction, and quite a few fantasy I found. So let's get started here. The first one I hauled was The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. I've read her book, The Alice Network, in the past, and I really enjoyed that. It was a World War II historical fiction, and this one is as well. And it is a dual timeline type of book. This book is must have been one that someone read and donated to the library. It doesn't even have any of their markings on it. It's a really great shape, so I was excited to see that one. It's one I've been con contemplating on reading. So good to have that for my collection. The next one just sounds like one of those cozy reads. I've seen it about before, but I didn't really know what it was about. It's Major Pettigrew's Last Stand by Helen Simonson. Uh, this talks about uh, a cast of hilarious uh, characters, uh, thatched cottages in the English countryside. Just reading that first paragraph really drew me in. So when I'm in the mood to read those cozy reads, I might pick that up. The next one is the cover that drew me in. It's The Illusionist by Rosie Thomas. And look at the playing cards on there. They're slippery. This is set in London in 1870. That itself draws me into a story. I have several books. It's kind of set in London in the past. And this is about the story around the theater world. Things like that remind me of books like The, the Night Circus, something like that. Just a magical type of atmosphere type of thing. So I, I've never heard of this book before. If you've read it, let me know if you liked it or not. But yeah, that looks so fascinating. The next book is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. I have read this before, and it's funny. I'd been thinking about purchasing this book on eBay to reread it. Uh, several years ago, I read this, and my memory is foggy on it, but in my Goodreads rating, I rated it like three and a half stars, and I don't know why, because this is a highly known book and people really loved. Uh, I read her book, Once Upon a River, and I absolutely love that book. It's one of my favorites. So I wanted to go back and reread this sometime. So I was glad they had this at the library sale. And I always was drawn to that cover, though. It's a beautiful cover. I bought this one for the author. It's Kristen Hanna, Firefly Lane. I've heard mixed reviews on this, but for the most part, it's favorable. And this would be a great one, I think, to read for early summer when the lightning bugs come out in the summertime. Just that atmospheric type of read. So I'm excited about having that one for my library too. The next two books are by the same author. And it's the author that I've been curious about maybe reading. Her books always draw me in. The covers, just something about them and the deckled edges on the books. It's The Golden Hour by Beatrice Williams and Summerwise by Beatrice Williams. The first one is set in 1941, Bahamas, and it's about espionage inside the court of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. And this book is set in the summer of 1951, and it's another one of those that sounds like uh, the elite society type of book. So when I'm in the mood to read that kind of book, and of course saying Summer Wives, it would be one of those juicy summer type of reads. The next two books are fantasy books. These two books are part of the Shadow of the Apt series by Adrian Tchaikovsky. These are the old covers. This is Dragonfly Falling. This is book two. And this is book three, Blood of the Mantis. They recently, well, it's been a little while now, they re-released these in newer covers 
those new covers are fascinating. I thought they were new books when I first saw them out, but they're not. They've just been re released with the new covers. However, the library did not have book one of this, but they do have it in the new cover so I can read it from the library and then continue on with book two and three. However, if I do come across like at a used bookstore book one, I probably will go ahead and pick it up. This is another one of those book series that I see some people that really love it and some not so hot. I don't know if they're comparing it maybe to some of Adrian Tchaikovsky's other works and maybe didn't like it as well, but it's one that I'm willing to give a try. The next book is a nonfiction book. Now, I am a lover of magazines as well as books, and I have subscriptions to so many. And one of my favorite magazines is Country Living Magazine. I've subscribed for this for a long time. This is my type of lifestyle. So, I was so happy when I saw this at the library. It's the Country Living, Country Gardening. And some of the... the the illustrations in here are so beautiful. Not illustrations, the pictures. Vivid pictures that would give me some great gardening ideas. I just really, just thumbing through it, it just looks so elegant. I think there was one in here. I probably can't find it right off. It's, uh, someone had a, uh, that's more what I would love to do. Someone had like a train tracks going through their garden in <laughs> the picture. Oh, that would be so, so cool. My dog would probably eat them, though. And the next nonfiction is At Home with Beatrix Potter by Susan Denyer. Uh, I don't know. I just something about Beatrix Potter. It's just she always drew her inspirations from nature and animals to see how... Uh, where she drew her inspirations from in this book would be fascinating. I do have another book of hers, but this one I love so much better because it has more of uh, the color, color photographs and illustrations this time. And to know more about her and see where she got her inspirations from. It shows some of her drawings and paintings in here too. But I was so excited to have that one, too. The next book I picked up is a historical fiction type of book, and I've picked up a few of his books here recently. It's New York by Edward Rutherford. He takes you to three centuries of families, both rich and poor. And this reminds me of the show The Gilded Age that I watched. I think it was on HBO. I really enjoyed that show to show the beginnings of New York, and it did a little bit of that, too. It showed the more of the rich and then the poor also and how they lived. I thought that really sounded fascinating. All of all of his books, I may pick this one up first to read. It, Like I said, historical fiction, I said in my past videos, historical fiction takes me a while to read, and this is a bigger book, but it really sounds fascinating. The next book I picked up for the author and the picture on the cover, uh, Kim Edwards, The Secrets of a Fire King. And this is just a short book, maybe if I'm, you know, kind of a burnout from reading a big book. This will be maybe a good one to dive into. I did read her, one of her books, The Memory Keeper's Daughter, as it's stated on there. Isn't that cover so cool? I remember The Memory Keeper's Daughter that I, I think I rated it like a four star on that one, but yeah. The next one is another nonfiction, The Old Ways by Robert McFarlane. He is one known for more of a nature type of writing. I've not read any of him yet, but I hear a lot of great things about him. It takes you around the British Isles and beyond other areas too of the past, the history of paths that people took. And that's my understanding of this book. So I went out and picked this up for future dabbling and reading. Okay, I'm going to show you one more cozy book, and then I'll get on with the fantasy books I picked up. The Elm Creek Quilts album by Jennifer Chiaverini. This is a combination of three different stories, and it just sounds like those cozy type of stories that I occasionally like to delve into. It's kind of like a palette refresher, I think. So, this book reminds me of spring, though. Something about it, uh, I don't know, <laughs> little flowers on the cover. It'd be maybe a good March or April type of read. Okay, now for the fantasy books. 
They are a mixed hodgepodge. As with a lot of fantasy books, they tend to be in series. So these are just miscellaneous books within series. So I will need to hunt down book one sometime, which I don't mind. It's just something about the thrill of the hunt with that. And to go ahead and pick up a book when you see it, yeah, that's a good thing. The first book is Legacies by L.E. Modisette Jr. This is the first book in the Korean Chronicles. This is an author that I'm wanting to read from, and I also have hauled some of his previous book before, uh, the in the Recluse Saga, I believe it was. Uh, so, I, I've not heard of the Korean Chronicles before, but when they had this, I thought I would go ahead and pick it up for future reading. Um, this second, I don't know if this is the second book. It just says on the front, the new book in the Korean Chronicles, the Lord Protector's Daughter. And then this one is the third book, is Scepters. I don't, I, I used to thought, think the fantasy covers like this were really cheesy, but I don't know. I kind of like them now. It just, the colors of them. Yeah, I really like that. This next book I had never heard of before. So let me know if you've read from this author before. It's Eric Van Lusbader and Mistress of the Pearl. This is book three in the series, and I think it's called the Pearl series. So I would need to hunt book one down to get started on reading this. But that cover with the dragon on it, that is gorgeous. Ah. Yeah, I wonder, I'm so curious what the other two look like. The next book is Witch Gate by James Clemens. I've not heard of this one before either. And this is, however, book five in the series. This is part of what's called the Ban and Banished series. Now, we'll do some more investigation in this to see if it's something I do want to pick up. But... For a dollar, it's worth the gamble of going ahead and picking that one up to hunt down the first one. The next is Terry Goodkind, The Omen Machine. This is a Richard and Kaylin novel. His Sword of Truth series is one that I do want to read in the future. He's one of those author people either love him or they hate him, but I do definitely want to give him a try. And the next one is Raymond E. Feist, at the Gates of Darkness. Now, this is a book two, and this is part of the Demon War Saga. I have heard of the Demon War Saga before, and I've heard that this one is a good one from Feist to read. Uh, like I said, let me know if you've read any of these, especially the fantasy books. To I, I can't always go by Goodreads. I would love to hear more feedback from you guys whether you like that or not. Thank you for watching today's video, and I will see you soon with that reading update. Goodbye.